Hello everyone, welcome back to City Skylines. This is the new map that we made for our new series where we will build the city of Asturias. In this episode, we will start building our first project, which is going to be the space elevator. And while I'm doing that in the background, in the time lapse, let's introduce the city and series a bit more. Asturias is going to be a futuristic city. We are building a space elevator, so I guess that goes without saying. It is going to be located somewhere in a coastal subtropical region, and unlike the previous cities, this one I started planning much more right from the start. You could have seen that with the map making video. Uh, just so I have a better idea about the final scale, the infrastructure, the city parts, and so on. If you watched the Aurelia series, then this one is going to be similar in certain ways. We are going to keep doing lots of vertical projects, plazas, stations, bridges, tunnels and interchanges eventually. I want to keep doing that somewhat cleaner futuristic style, although I downloaded some of the hollow adverts or decorations, so maybe for example a few cyberpunk elements could be here and there, but that definitely won't be the main theme. We can see that the color palette changed a lot from the previous series and colors are definitely something I want to pay more attention to when selecting structures, surfaces and other details. Overall the city will have strong public transport infrastructure, there will be trains, trams, buses and ferries and maybe more and I will try to make sure that the city is walkable. Although car infrastructure will also be present in some reasonable scale and like I explained in the final overview for Aurelia, it's not like I like heavy car infrastructure in real life, but it's just really satisfying to build it and see it in action in city skylines, although Asturias, unlike Aurelia, won't have it go directly through its center. The space elevator will be the main obvious focus of the whole city, but on land, the heart of Asturias will be formed by its main transportation hub, which I don't want to spoil too much because it will be a topic for the second episode, but you could have seen me do like a straight line through the map. That is going to be a future high-speed rail, intentionally completely straight like that, and the space elevator is placed in the bay so that a connection from it goes perpendicular to that future line, and at the intersection there will be that big hub in the center, roughly in the center of the city. So the geometry here is somewhat important, although the rest of the city I want to continue with a slightly more chaotic style of city blocks, uh, just like in Aurelia, with maybe just a few infrastructure elements defining some basic unifying geometry. One thing I learned the hard way in Aurelia was that you cannot build a realistically scaled large city in this game. It's just not possible. You, were, you will run out of limits, motivation, patience, FPS or all of those combined. So Asturias right from the start is planned to be very high density in the center, kind of very compact because that's the style I enjoy building the most and it will either suddenly end at the edges when it just reaches some natural barriers like water, rivers or the tall hills or I'm just going to cut it at some point and fill the rest with trees or something. I don't really enjoy building those low density suburbs too much but uh, you know maybe I maybe if I feel like it's necessary I will just do some copy paste quick neighborhoods but hopefully not. Uh, $2.20 did a really good explanation of this issue and he used a very fitting comparison with the GTA 5 map which is also heavily scaled down but it still looks absolutely fine. Anyway, I think that could be all for the basic introduction. I obviously didn't plan absolutely every single detail right now, so we will just discover it together which direction the city takes as we continue building it. So, what is the space elevator here? What is its purpose? It doesn't work as the vanilla elevator, absolutely not, because I really hate vanilla tourists. The main point of the elevator is to provide jobs for the city and to attract a lot of people and cargo to it. The building itself is just a decoration of course, because it's mostly procedural objects, but inside of it there will be those little service cubes that serve as industry, office and uh, entertainment, park entertainment. Right now the city doesn't have any population and uh, it actually won't for a couple more episodes since I want to focus on some infrastructure. So I'm not building that many of those cubes inside the elevator because I want to keep it balanced with the city's demands. But I did some temporary housing for this episode just so we have people walking around the place. Now as you can see the elevator is shaped so that uh, it has uh, different levels and it has those piers at the bottom. 
Now, those top levels, those will be mostly for people like office workers, let's say. The middle level I did is going to be the entrance uh, using the using the train, using the, the line from the city, from that transport hub. And the piers, those are going to be used for barges. In this city, I will be using the barges mod, and those will bring in all cargo, all the cargo, actual gameplay cargo from, you know, outside of the map. And they will also, you know, export those uh, finished products either outside of the map again or back into the city. There will be a couple of harbors around the bay that will, you know, accept and distribute that cargo to the rest of the city. So it's definitely going to be a very important structure. But uh, clearly, right now, it's not really going to be because the rest of the city is just non-existent. So we will have to wait until we just uh, get that city going and uh, then we will see some serious traffic uh, overall on the map around the elevator because, you know, the entire bay is going to be just uh, completely filled with all kinds of ferry paths and barges paths. So hopefully that's going to look good. Anyway, let's get a bit more technical. What exactly am I doing here and how am I doing it? So you could have seen that I already had the space elevator building. That's because there is already a space elevator like this in the workshop. You can just download it. I'm not really sure if it works as a space elevator. I think it has uh, like many different versions or at least two, but I'm going to put a link down below in the description so you can check it out for yourself. But in Asturis, I wanted to have the elevator building much larger than it's by default and that inevitably made it a bit rough with all the rounded surfaces so I definitely wanted to improve that and I used the Apple campus building which is nicely nicely detailed I already used it in Aurelia so I have some you know experience with it even with procedural objects changing it with procedural objects and it's a, it's a really good fit here because it has those almost solar panel looking uh, surfaces on the roof, which is just looking really great. It has really nice reflectivity on it, really good color. That's the color uh, color choices that I talked about. I would really like to pay attention to that. So that's, that's making it really good. And then I'm using, for example, those colored uh, asphalt networks. I'm using the orange one on that middle level where the public transport is going to enter. And then also using some of the thinner uh, green colored asphalt networks uh, there on the outer ring to just uh, kind of outline those parks that I'm doing there, uh, which is, again, just like a nicely colored uh, detail in that area. It's a very nice contrast with all these colors that we have going on there. Now, this, what I'm doing in here is the functionality bit that I talked about. So I just made uh, with procedural objects a group, which I which I just included or I included all the structures for the elevator into it and then I made it hidden so that I can see what I'm doing down below. And uh, I'm just using this vanilla road that I uh, customized in the road editor so that it doesn't have the terrain go up towards it, but it's still a surface version so that I can have all these little, yes, you can see them down there, those yellows, those yellow cubes which are the industrial buildings. I think a single cube is exactly the same as a 4x4 industrial vanilla building. So it has like 20, I think, workspaces. There are not that many of them, but that's exactly what I talked about because we don't really have uh, the city around the elevator to kind of, you know, support it, sustain it. As you can see, it's uh, kind of screaming for workers. Now, by the way, the, the road that I created there, customized down there for this purpose, I have uh, put it into the workshop. It's hidden, so you can't download it. But uh, once I uh, once I decide to release this map, it's going to be possible to use it with all the customized networks. So right from the start, unlike Aurelia, I'm making sure that uh, this city is going to be somewhat workshop friendly. So you know, when the time comes, I'm going to be able to release it. So you can you know maybe take a look at, around the city for yourself if it's you know going to be uh, reasonably reasonably uh, friendly for just, uh, you know, downloading and using by someone else. But we will see. But I'm kind of making sure from the start that I have the options, right? Anyway, the flying train that I'm preparing in here is the newest addition into the workshop made by Nardo. I'm definitely going to link this one in the video description. Be sure to check that out. It's, uh, it's a really interesting piece of, uh, of uh, railway, I was about to say. Uh, well, it's not really. It's not really a railway because it, these are just like flying vehicles that are going to fly through these uh, through these rings. The actual track is invisible, and these rings are just forming the supports of the path of the train. The train doesn't have any wheels or anything 
like that. Now there are these kinds of actual solid tracks and also station tracks. Although I believe that a single version of a of a station track is not here. So or is there? I'm not actually sure. I think there isn't. So that's why I did that little overlap with like a standard looking track so that I can have it uh, in here. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I did. And I also created like a little uh, outline for the platform and uh, you know, overall just making sure that this uh, track for the flying train is just blending to, to this surface or you know, the levels and everything like that. So as you can see, I'm trying to make the elevator building symmetrical so that uh, there are going to be two tracks or two lines of these flying trains going to that middle level, which is going to be the public transport enter entrance level. And they are going to go slightly around the elevator building and stop uh, at the at the sides of those uh, of those levels of those surfaces, right? And uh, it's just like a one uh, one lane two way uh, lines. So uh, there's going to be just a single vehicle going back and forth on that line between the elevator and the and uh, the main transportation hub that we are going to do in uh, in episode two in the next episode. All right. So it's not going to be particularly long. So only two vehicles are just going to be going back and forth. And, uh, you know, hopefully it's going to be enough. It's going to be absolutely fine. The trains are kind of uh, normally sized. So they are like very high capacity options. So it's going to be fine. At this point, I didn't have the actual vehicles. So I was just using some kind of like a placeholder uh, vehicle, for example, this one. But this one we will actually see because this is actually the uh, choice I did for the high speed trains. But it's going to be like similarly uh, similar in length. So, you know, I was just kind of checking it out in here. Now, one super important thing that I need to do is obviously make it uh, walkable, make it uh, just possible for uh, pedestrians to cross into the different levels. Right now, I'm only doing it so that people can go between this uh, middle level and the bottom level. And I think I might probably keep it that way because uh, really people don't need to go to that very top level because it's all going to be hidden. And if I'm going to include some kind of... Uh, some kind of office buildings, then I'm probably either going to do it in this middle level on this orange level, or I, I might as well just uh, slap them down on that road since I already have it there. So that's going to be absolutely fine to do it. It's all going to be hidden inside the elevator building. What matters most is just that uh, the entire area is going to provide the jobs and the industrial manufacturing capacities to bring in the cargo. But where exactly is it going to be inside the procedural object uh, monstrosity that we are building here doesn't really matter. Although it kind of does matter because we obviously don't want to create traffic issues inside of the actual space elevator. Right now it's not an issue, but I have no idea if this is going to be, you know, possible or not. All of these roads, I believe, are one way. So there's like a like a, like a way of cars that's going to be just circling around there. So hopefully that's going to be that's going to be fine. Uh, this place on the shore that I'm doing here, you can just see me, I copy pasted the map entrances and there's a barge harbor that I also customized that I made and it's just an invisible barge harbor for the barges mod and I also placed it on the piers of the elevator and there on the land just so it's like a temporary thing just so we can have some uh, traffic going into it although I believe that uh, in the cinematics I didn't manage to catch any of those barges going in so unfortunately we won't see them but you will have to believe me that uh, they are actually working and they are there like I said when we are finally going to increase the manufacturing uh, you know, counts, the work uh, workplaces counts in here, then we are definitely going to see a lot of uh, barges with lots of cargo going in here. So now I'm going to detail that uh, th those piers, right, for the cargo. Now, I believe that the elevator building has in total six piers. We are going to make four of them basically identical. And another one is going to be only for ferries or like, uh, no, what's the other word? Cruise ships, yeah, cruise ships, bigger ships that are probably going to arrive to the city from the sea or something. And uh, they can just immediately go to the elevator building. And the and the last pier is uh, is kind of going to be under those tracks that are leading towards, uh, towards the elevator with that flying train. And I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with that one. It might be for passenger ferries or something like that, but we will see. But anyway, these, uh, these cargo these cargo piers. That's what we are going to focus on right now. 
So the barges that I'm using in here, those are the actual functioning barges from the barge mod. And they are not really futuristic, they are just, you know, normal looking, contemporary uh, barges. So they have containers and they are just kind of looking ordinary. So I also need to adapt the, uh, you know, the unloading facility to that. So I'm going to build like uh, decorative cranes and some kind of uh, containers just, you know, being stored uh, on, in, the, in the open and some kind of ways for transporting all the materials inside of the elevator. I'm thinking that inside these piers, these piers are probably going, um, you know, below the, the waterline as well, right? There are probably some kind of like manufacturing facilities for uh, creating some kind of equipment or, I don't know, consumables for, you know, the space operations, whatever. And uh, they're just manufactured in this place because maybe it's like convenient or something like that. And the barges are just bringing in all the necessary raw materials for that. Now, the portion of the unloading facility is probably going to be automated. So I'm not really going to make it that open, not going to make any kind of, uh, you know, places for operators or something like that. These cranes, I'm making them so that uh, they are just going to have that center uh, center support right there. That's going to obviously go on some kind of a rail. And then on the other side, it's going to be, there's going to be another rail on the on the edge of that roof of that center building or something. Uh, the walls of that center building I made using, I think, some kind of a... Yeah, I actually don't remember. It's like a Chinese museum building these days or something. I placed it in Aurelia a long time ago. It's a really nice looking building. It has those like very futuristic looking lines on, on the glass panels. So that was absolutely uh, perfect for uh, this purpose. And then the center beam or the center building of the entire pillar is, or the entire pier, is just extracted from the actual elevator building. So I'm doing this a couple more times uh, throughout the elevator build. I'm just uh, copy pasting the, the elevator as a whole, and then I'm just extracting a couple of elements from it. Like for example, those pillars to just support that orange level and things like that. So, you know, heavily customizing it. So this is what I was talking about. I'm thinking that the manufacturing level really goes uh, underground also, or under the level, right, under water level. So these are some kind of uh, like entrances uh, through the through the roof, where it's just going to open, and the crane is just going to lower that uh, container with the materials down below. Now that I think of it, I probably could have animated it at least slightly because now we have procedural objects animations. But uh, but yeah, well, I forgot. So doing some more details here, just like for example these doors to just you know for some kind of maintenance or something. It's not really going to be. Uh, used for like trucks or anything, even though you could have seen that there is that fake road or not fake, just invisible road uh, below this uh, place so that uh, actual cars will, uh, after barge enters the harbor, actual cars are going to spawn there and just distribute the cargo inside the elevator building to those industrial cubes. And like I said, hopefully we are going to see lots of these barges just uh, go into in and out of the elevator. Now, I downloaded a few new container packs and I'm just, you know, using them in here for just decorations, making sure that uh, the place is gonna look uh, reasonably busy with all kinds of cargo. So even using uh, some kind of those like nuclear cans or something and uh, these kinds of like tanks and smaller containers, larger, different sizes, uh, different styles, colors, uh, markings, whatever, just to have a lot more variety in that place and overall making it look slightly dirtier so that the industrial bottom level of the elevator is going to be somewhat dirty and then uh, that uh, people level, uh, well obviously there is that outer level with the parks which is kind of dividing the industry and the people level, the orange one, which, uh, which is much cleaner than this. In here, I'm also using some kind of stains and uh, just making the surfaces, uh, you know, slightly, slightly weathered, which is, which is definitely a nice contrast. Again, definitely liking it uh, very much. Now, by the way, I just, uh, I just remembered that uh, for Asturias, I'm actually going to be using reshade as well. I'm going to be using the levels filter. I, I'm not using it right now in here, but you are going to see it in the cinematics. It might be a bit too much, uh, like contrast or whatever, but um, I'm actually kind of liking it. I know it's a bit, a uh, bit overdone. Probably it's not meant to be like realistic colors, I suppose. But uh, you know, it's not a realistic city anyway. We are building a space elevator, so. 
I'm probably going to keep it, although it's it's not set in stone. Maybe things are going to change. Uh, this pier right here, that's one. That's the one that's uh, going to serve the uh, cruise ships uh, later. I did already put a cruise harbor and on it, uh, on both sides, I believe. But uh, so far, we haven't had any cruise ships. I don't really think that we will, though, because I'm probably going to just ban tourists from the city completely and cruise ships. As far as I know, they are only going to transport tourists, right, in the in the vanilla game. So maybe we are not really going to have any. This is going to be super important, though. This is exactly what I was talking about. I'm just going to make sure that the entire bay is going to have as many of these uh, ferry paths as possible. Although these are going to be for the barges, for the cargo barges. And we are also going to have cargo coming in uh, through the rivers, right? We have two rivers on the map and both of them will have these ferry paths so that, uh, you know, at the edges of the map, in the, in the border fogs, there are going to be these like uh, map entrances, quotation marks, which are just barge harbors, but they will have like a, like a highway connection, right? It's going to be all hidden inside the fog. So again, as we progress with the city building, we should have uh, more and more demand for industry. And uh, I'm going to fulfill that industrial demand by just increasing the amount of actual industrial capabilities inside the elevator. And we will have lots of barges coming in and out of the elevator with the raw materials and the finished uh, goods to supply the city as well. So I suppose that we will also create uh, some kind of, uh, you know, commercial capacities in the city. So we actually have that kind of demand. Now I'm going to build uh, a very important thing and that is going to be the connection uh, over the bay to the mainland, to the main station uh, for the flying trains. Now the trains are not like totally flying on their own. They are going to pass through these uh, rings, like I said, these sonic rings kind of. And um, I wanted to make a customized pillars for them. They are obviously not just going to be floating in the air, although I believe Nardo also created like a, like a flying version, which is, uh, you know, a bit too much for me. I really don't want to do that. So I'm just going to provide some kind of supports, but I don't want to create like a forest of supports. Obviously there's going to be some boat traffic underneath. So I'm going to create these customized pillars that each hold five of these uh, rings because I also don't want to have those rings spaced that much. I want to have them so that the train is always going to have uh, three rings uh, or it's going to be passing three rings at any given point, right? So I'm just creating, I'm using those rings and the pillars for them. I'm just kind of customizing this shape. I, I think it turned out looking okay. Maybe it's a bit too heavy. I really tried to and make it as uh, slimmer as possible. Also, this kind of spacing that I ha did here, I actually kind of screwed it up. It's uh, it's a bit wrong. I'm going to rebuild it for the next episode, I believe, but I'm probably not going to uh, show you that. But it's just like a tiny, tiny change that I had to do there. But, you know, it's kind of working. Yeah, these are some kind of like temporary stations, temporary housing that I had to do on the shores just so we can have some people uh, shown in the cinematics. And the trains were looking just absolutely amazing and these are going to be the final cinematics oh yeah you can definitely tell that the colors changed quite a bit because of uh, because of reshade but i really like it i really like it i really like the contrasts in this place in particular the the orange level and uh, you know the blue the solar panels on that uh, apple campus roofs those are looking really good and also forgot to mention but you saw that that i extracted those uh, solar panels also to put them on the piers which is just going to make the entire place kind of blended to together now these these are the final cinematics you can just see uh yeah sure i placed a couple of decorative boats here and there just so we can see the potential that this place might have but hopefully in the future we are going to see uh live ones i also provided some kind of like turning uh, loops for the barges so that it's not going to look that weird like in the vanilla game for example when ships are turning it's looking bad so we will see uh, these are the flying trains and just look at them go I especially changed the colors for them one is blue one is red we are probably going to I'm going to probably refer to them as this because they are going to go into slightly different areas of that main public transport hub and they each have slightly different uh, purpose, I suppose, but we might think of that, uh, you know, later. And uh, obviously, as it goes towards the elevator, there is like a little diverging place for those uh, for those rings, and it's just so satisfying watching those trains just follow that 
into the rings and into uh, these uh, station tracks. And look how many people we have just walking around that place at this point. It's just it's just so satisfying. I can't help it. And uh, yeah, when we are going to just include all the barges into the equation, it's, it's going to look good. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm not really sure if it's uh, if it's visible in the cinematics or in the time lapse, but it may be like an Easter egg or something. Well, probably shouldn't mention it then, but I will. That I also created like an animated vehicle inside the main pylon. It's like just a procedural object, a cube or a cylinder or something, and it's just going up and down, uh, up and down with the animations. So it's going to look like there is actually some kind of a vehicle that is uh, just bringing all the materials into orbit. I also had to make sure that uh, the pylon is, you know, very, very tall. It goes very high. I actually learned that procedural objects have like a limit for uh, heights of uh, objects. So I had to copy paste a couple of them, stack them like this. And especially in the next shot, it's going to be visible how it casts a very long shadow. Anyway, guys, that is going to be all for the space elevator building. So stay tuned for the next episode where we are going to start doing that big public transport hub, the heart of the city. Thank you for watching this one. Hope you liked it. If you did, then you can do the usual to help the channel, help the video. So that's likes, sub subscribes, comments. And if you really like this, then you can become a channel member and support me and the channel directly. Big thanks to all the channel members that we currently have. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you again and goodbye.